Okay, number two, uh, the second use of speaking in other tongues. It is a prayer language. It's a prayer language. How many of you know sometimes you don't know how to pray? Some things are so complex, so difficult to understand with your natural mind and your senses that you really don't know how to pray. You ever been there? I've been there many, many times. And that's why the writer to Romans says this in Romans 8, 26. He says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes according, intercedes for the saints in accordance with the will of God. There are moments that will happen in your life when you don't know how to pray. You will look at that scenario and you will think, ah, how can God bring good out of that? My son is... Uh, overdosing on drugs my my daughter is is pregnant and not married my my fi- my wife was in a car wreck my father passed away my cousin was diagnosed with leukemia the burdens of life come into every situation and in that moment my friend you need a language that you can pray in because you see our mental mind is not enough to be able to communicate with the lord what we need is a supernatural spiritual language where we can communicate Communicate with our spirit directly to God. Amen. I believe in this with all of my heart. And I'm just here to declare that it is possible for your spirit to pray in a language you don't understand about a situation that you can't figure out and see God turn it around and bring good out of it. Amen. Amen. And I believe in that with all my heart. Amen. You say, well, Pastor... Aren't when, when you speak in tongues, aren't you supposed to understand what, what you're saying? Doesn't I mean, you know, like on the day of Pentecost, they, when they spoke, the people understood what they were saying. That's an interesting question. How'd you like to know the answer? First Corinthians 14 2 gives us the answer. It says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. What? I'm not speaking to men, I'm speaking to God. Indeed, it says, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. It's your spirit talking to God's spirit by the Holy Spirit. Come on. Wow. I'm just telling you, it's supernatural. <laughs> you say, well, do, are we supposed to not pray with our mind, with our wisdom? Are we not supposed to use English or Spanish or whatever language you speak? French up there in verse or some others, you know. No, so what is it? 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit. I'm going to pray with my mind also. Wait a minute. You can pray both with your spirit and with your mind. And uh, I just believe that this is a very, very powerful thing. Because, you see, we don't know how to pray as we, as we need to pray. I need God's help in everything. I need him to to show me how to pray. And uh, beyond that, let me tell you, it uh, it will build you up spiritually. It'll build you up spiritually to speak in your prayer language. 1 Corinthians 14.4 says this, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Edify means to fortify, to strengthen, to build something up. So if you, it says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Now, that's why we don't just sit around here and all of us uh, speak in other tongues, okay? I mean, you know, that's not God's purpose, his intention for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That would be weird. Hello. Tell your neighbor we're not going to be weird, all right? We're not going to just all come around and get in a circle and everybody speak in other tongues. You want to know why? That doesn't build anybody up. That doesn't help anybody. That doesn't encourage anybody. Because let me tell you, once you've heard someone speak in another tongue, if you're a believer, it ain't no big deal, okay? You heard it once. You've heard it a million times. They're speaking in another tongue. It's, it's, it's not a mystery. It's biblical. It's powerful. 
it's real, but it doesn't build you up. But on the other hand, when a person individually in their private prayer closet kneels down and they say, God, I'm feeling weak today. I need your spirit. I need to be built up. And you begin to pray in another tongue. You want to know what it does? It fortifies you. It builds you up and you become strong again. Come on. Is there anybody who believes the word of God today? Amen. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. All right. Jude says this, and I love this verse. It says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith. Well, how do you do that? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in those things today. And then there's a third use of tongues, and that is as a gift of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that God has given to the church of Jesus Christ various supernatural gifts. They're found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me read some verses out of there. It says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To another, it goes on to say, different kinds of tongues and still to still another the interpretation of tongues so this gives us yet a third use for tongues in the bible the first use is what number one it is described as the initial physical evidence of the baptism in the holy spirit secondly it is a prayer language and thirdly it can be used as a gift of the holy spirit as I just spoke a moment ago, I, I, I believe it, that God would rather us speak five intelligible words than 10,000 words in another tongue so that we can communicate with another and we can understand one another. That makes sense, doesn't it? Amen. But there are moments in the body of Christ when God wants to grab someone's attention. And, and, and so what the Lord does is he begins to manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And what happens then is somebody gives a message in tongues and then that message in tongues needs to be followed by an interpretation of that message. Come on. Those are gifts of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, why would God do that? I mean, isn't that going to, like, freak people out? Well, you know, what, what, what is that all about? Let me tell you something. God actually has rules about this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says that at the most two, if anyone, 1 Corinthians 14, 27 says, if anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should speak one at a time and someone must interpret. So uh, that tells us that we're not supposed to all just sit around speaking in, the, in the other tongues and, you know, doing all of that. No, we're, if there's a message in tongues, it has to be interpreted. How many of you can see the difference? One's a gift of the Holy Spirit. One's personal prayer language. It's simple to understand if you can get your head around that. Amen. What well, the most two, two or at the most three messages in tongues. You say, well, why would God do that? Here's an interesting verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 22. This is a verse that many churches never preach about. They walk over it. They don't ever think about it. They never talk about it. They just leave this one alone because it says this. It says, tongues then are a sign not for believers but for unbelievers. What? I thought tongues were for believers. Tongues as, as the initial physical evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's for believers. As, as a prayer language, that's for believers. But here it says this for unbelievers. Unbelievers, absolutely. You want to know why? Because when somebody is in a church service and the Holy Spirit's moving and someone gives a message in other tongues, let me tell you, they may not understand what's going on, but they can feel what's going on. And it is a supernatural sign that there's a supernatural, powerful God that has something to say to them in that moment. Do I have anybody who believes that today? Come on. And I just want to believe, tell you that I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Back earlier in my day, when I young, when I was a young man, I was just trying to decide whether I should be a minister or what I needed to do. I was about 20 years old, and I, I was looking for guidance, and I was at a church camp, all right, up in Alexandria, Minnesota, and uh, there was, a, there was a, a, a message in tongues and an interpretation that was given in that congregation of about 1,500 people, okay? And so it was crazy. I mean, I couldn't even hear it. They were, they were just way over 
over there. I couldn't make out the words that they were saying. It's a true story. So I said, God, I said, I just want to hear from you today. If anything like that ever happens again in this service, let it be right where I can hear. Let me tell you something. There was a guy sitting right behind me with the loudest voice that anybody. He, he could have preached to 10,000 people, all right? God wanted to get my attention that day. And he began almost immediately after I prayed that prayer, guess what? He began to speak in another tongue. And then he gave an interpretation. And that interpretation was exactly what I needed in my life. I said, yes, Lord, that's for me. Come on. I'm just here today to tell you that this stuff is real and it's powerful and we need it in the church of the living God because let me tell you our world is hurting and there's a lot of young people in our world that they believe that Satan has the power, that drugs have the power, that demons have the power, but they've never seen the power of the living God. I'm here to declare that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He still does the miraculous and he's still a supernatural God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Ah, oh, where am I at now? All right, number four. You still with me today? Spirit, it's a, a, the fourth use of tongues is as a means of worship. Spirit filled worship is something that is tremendous. Remember, tongues are a way of communicating with God, right? Absolutely. It's only natural that if when you're praying in English that those prayers will be interspersed with worship, right? Who does that when you're praying? Who does when you say, Lord, I just want to pray today. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. You begin to intersperse that with worship in English. Would it make sense that if you if your spirit is able to, to communicate with God through speaking in other tongues in your prayer language that it would, would affect your ability to worship, in particular in private worship. 1 Corinthians 14 15 says this. It says, I will sing with my spirit and I will also sing with my mind. Sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my mind. Ephesians 5, 19, uh, Paul writes this. He says, speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Some people think, well, that's, you know, your heart's just full of the latest praise and worship song or an old hymn or what have you. No, that's, that's about inventing a melody in your heart to the Lord. Has anybody ever done You can do it in English. You don't have to know tongues to worship, like you, to make a melody in your heart. You can just say, Lord, I love you today. Yeah, yeah. Just invent it in your soul. Mine always comes out a little jazzy, yeah. Mm. But that's because my spirit wants to communicate with, you know, that, you see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not going to do that in church every Sunday. Aren't you glad? Say, praise God for miracles. Amen. No, 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 no. But let me tell you, in my private life, I do that. I might just walk around the block singing some oddball song. You say, well, why do you do that? I'll tell you why. Because how many, let me tell you, this month, my wife and I, we celebrate 41 years of marriage. Amen. 41 years. That's pretty long. And back, back when I used to thump at the guitar, I never really played the guitar, but I thumped at it. I would write her a song or two. I, can't, I don't remember any of them. and They were bad. But you know what? She was so nice. She would say, that's so nice. And how many of you ever had a little kid come up to you? And they say, Daddy, I love you. I got a song for you. And they just start singing it. How many of you think, how, is there any grandparents that really eat that up? Come on. They come, yeah. Wait a minute. God is our heavenly father. How much does he love it when we come with the simple melody in our heart with songs in English or, or songs in, the, in, our, in our prayer language and we worship him like that? Let me tell you something. It'll take it to a complete new dimension in worship. Amen. And I believe that God, our Heavenly Father, just loves it when we sing and make melody in our heart to him. Amen. Amen. And the beauty of it is that those praises, that worship, that spiritual song pierces the heavens and comes into the ears 
of a mighty God that says, I just love it when my children praise me. Amen. Would you stand with me today?